No, allow viewers to request. Hello, everybody. This light is giving me light. Hey guys. Hi Michael Poole. What's going on? I didn't get to record this morning because the devil is a liar. He tried to take me out y'all. Hey Lamar. Lamar need another computer. My computer is possessed. <laughs> it tried to attack me. <laughs> I was, hey Mac J. What's up Quinda? Hey what's happening? Hey, y'all, I didn't get a chance to record earlier today because the devil was trying to take me out, but I had to fight back. We talking religion and relationships, y'all. Religion versus relationships. I'm on my Instagram live. I'm on my Facebook live. I'm not in the studio tonight. I'm somewhere else. Hey, Pamela. What's up, girl? I ain't talked to you in a long time. Melissa, Tamika, what's good? I'm on my Instagram live. I'm on my Facebook live. Hey, Tamika Martin. How you doing? Hey, Lamar, I'm serious. I really do need a computer. My computer is, um, hey, Jason. My computer is possessed, y'all. I was trying to, God, the, the enemy wouldn't let me be great, but I'm still going to be great. Okay? I know you'll hook me up. So tonight we're talking about Religion versus relationships. I am on site. I'm still going to record my show even if I ain't at the studio because ain't nothing going to stop me. I had to get my aura and my energy together so that I don't snap on these ninjas. Okay. What's up, mother effa underscore Jack? I still need my phone because you was talking junk and I ain't even playing. I got Lamar going to get me a computer and you going to get me a phone. You okay? Since you take Sean God Daddy, you know what I'm saying? Help his mama out. Somebody need to help her, okay? But we ain't gonna talk about that today. Listen, y'all. God is good. It's a blessing to be alive and well and in the land of the living. Today was just one of those days. And I know that the enemy didn't want me to do my show today because of what is what I'm talking about. And I'm talking about religion versus relationship. And as you know, Easter is Sunday. It, Easter just like popped up like the Easter bunny. I don't know where it came from. It just came up out of the hole and was like, hello, on April Fool's, it's going to be Easter. Like who gets to decide when Easter is, but that's no here or there. I'm not going to try to fight the man or the system. I'm just going to stay black and live. So we're talking about relationship and religion. And Easter Sunday is this weekend. Good Friday is tomorrow, so y'all know Good Friday is the day that he's getting ready to go to the cross. And then on Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, is the day that he rise and he's risen. You feel me? Okay, so I wanted to talk about religion versus relationship. And I know during this time frame, we get so caught up. What's up, sister? Nuno talking about add me. So... I know sometimes during this time we get so consumed with the Easter bunny and getting suits and going shopping and getting the best. And don't get me wrong because I got caught up in that too. But I want to encourage you to have a relationship with God, your higher being, your stone, your rock, whoever you want to have a relationship with. Turn your, turn your camera towards you a little more. Like this. Is this better? Is that better, Dejanay? <laughs> so, um, I remember being caught up with making sure that my son had the perfect suits and making sure that, you know, he had the right outfit and we matched and all of that. And that's not what Easter is about. That's not what... That's not what Christ died on the cross for. He died on the cross for you to have a relationship with him, not to look flat on Sunday. Um, so I want to implore all those parents 
who feel the need to go get the special gown or the special dress um, and getting your hair done and your nails done. And you don't even go to church on a regular basis, um, which is kind of redundant. And I feel like sometimes it's a slap in God's face for you to show up in your finest and think that you're giving God some glory and you ain't even been there all year. Uh, we have, you know, uh, we got them EMC members and don't get me wrong. I'm not judging at all. Non-judgmental. I'm just making an observation on my opinion because this is my show. And yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. My thing is don't slap God in the face by showing up to church suited and booted and you ain't been all year. Don't even do it. Come as you are. If you rock true religions and jeans and tees and t-shirts, come to church like that. Don't go buying you no suit with some gators thinking that you're doing something because God is not impressed. He's not impressed. Actually, you are an embarrassment. You might as well not even go. You might as well go home and watch TV, uh, church on TV, because that's just how silly you look. Um, and I say that because the world wants to conform us and think that it's necessary, one, to shop and spend unnecessary money. Two... Buy our kids things that are not effective or relevant for their lives. I mean, to be honest, half of y'all kids don't even know a scripture. And nine times out of ten, y'all don't know a scripture either. And I'm not saying that to put you down or make you feel insignificant because sanctification is a process. Growing in God is a process. However, priorities are a process. And I remember being a young mother because I was a teenage mom and wanted my son to look the par and make sure that he was dressed the par. But that's not what it's about. God wants a relationship with you. And some of y'all ain't talked about God's until Drake came out with God's plan. Some of y'all ain't said God and I don't know how long. But now that Drake talking about some God's plan. And, and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Y'all are watching. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, this is the time where God is going to get your praise, whether you want it or not, whether you want to or not. He's utilizing Drake. He's utilizing Snoop. Snoop got the number one gospel album. Now, that should tell you something. We got these niggas that's been singing about the Lord for years and they ain't even hit number one. That should tell you something. God honors an honest and true heart. And when you honest and you true and your heart is right and your heart is pure, he going to honor that. There have been times where I've been drunk. I mean, drunk as a skunk. Okay. And been listening to hot one. I mean, not hot 107.5, but shout out to hot 107.5. My family over there, big Greg, shout out to my brother and my sister, Ebony and my nephew, Kyrie and Kingston. Um, but I would listen to praise 102.7 and just cry drunk or high. Because I needed God to do something for me that church couldn't fulfill. See, what we fail to realize is church is an institution where you go to be amongst like believers. So that your faith and your relationship with God is strengthened. That's where you go to get that support. That support system that we all need as we walk through this life. You guys are watching, yeah, I said it, and we're talking about relationship versus religion. And as Easter Sunday approaches, I want to let all of my parents and all of my people know that's getting ready for Easter. Um, it's, it's not about dressing up because God already know what you're going to do. He know the cigarettes in your pocket, the Newport 100s in a pack, soft pack, hard pack, I already know. Um, he know that the fifth that's in your car, he know about the blunt you got rolled up in the glove compartment. He know about the sex that you had the night before you got there. He know about the sex that you're going to have when you leave the church. So this is, we're not about to play no games, uh, with God and see some of you haven't reverenced God in so long. And I can understand why, because life sometimes has a way of beating you down like today. And I'm about to cry y'all. Life has a way. Of beating you down to a point where you feel small and you feel insignificant. Especially when you start measuring your life in comparison to others. But God said, I come to bring you life and that more abundantly. So I had to get my mind right. And 
and my thoughts because the enemy will have you thinking that you're not doing enough. You're not big enough. You're not making enough money. You're not flashy enough. You're not enough. And, and God is saying, you are enough. You're more than enough. You're wonderfully and fearfully made. I made you. I made you before you even knew you were even made. And the reason that I love God so much and I had to get my mind right, y'all, I don't want to give y'all a mess. I, I love me so much at this point in my life that I want to give you the best that I have. I don't want to have step. And so I had to rearrange my thought process because I looked at my finances and my finances said, you ain't enough. I looked at my situation and my situation said, you ain't enough. And so I had to reevaluate my thought process because the enemy will come in and try to make you feel like you're not enough, you know? And I've been there. I'm going through it right now. And I am the whole purpose of my show is to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God in real life. Like I ain't got time. And anybody that really knows me, not just through social media, but knows me like like, know me, know me. Like today, the post office lady was going to get it. Excuse me. The, the people at 36th District Court was going to get it. They decided they want to be closed the day before Good Friday. Like, I understand you being closed on Good Friday, okay, because it's Good Friday. But why are you closed on Good Thursday? Because they tailgating? Because cause the white folks is tailgating? And no shade to the white folks. Power to you. I love you, white folks. But you mean to tell me y'all gonna shut down a whole parking lot in 36 District Court? We got people on probation, parole, need to go to court, need to see a judge. But y'all up in here tailgating and, and y'all better make sure all them white people clean up downtown. Because it ain't black people that's just tearing stuff up. Y'all have these white people come down here and they have a grand old time and they leave downtown dirty. They leave them beer cans, them beer bottles. They want ecstasy, weed, prostitutes, all of that. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. They come down to Detroit and they come and they have fun, playtime in the city. And then it looked like us niggas don't know how to take care of our city. And it ain't right. 36th District Court should have been open. Okay? Period. Then, so... We talking about relationship versus religion. Because I have a relationship. You know I had to do the ghetto clap. The ratchet clap. Because I have a relationship with God. I didn't punch the lady in the face. Because she was going to get these hands. You know I'm from Joy Road to Seven Mile. And I don't play no games with nobody. Don't let these pearls fool you. And these boobs. Okay. They may be high and lifted, but I will knock you out and knock you down. And I think that's why God told me to go to Bible study yesterday. Because I hadn't been to Bible study. Yes, I did say good Thursday. <laughs> I, I, um, I went to Bible study because I hadn't been to church in a while. And he was talking about people testing you and acting like they don't know you don't know how to cuss. And acting like you don't know how to fight. I'm telling you. I will get down with the best of them. And I think that's probably why my relationship with God is so strong because he stripped me of everything. He humbled me. And you got to be careful when you ask and pray for certain things because if you ask and God to humble you, you better be careful how he does it because he'll make it where he'll embarrass you. He'll strip you. He'll take everything away from you and humble you to the point where you have nobody else but God. And he's done it. I'm a living witness to that. We talking about relationship versus religion, y'all. And I'm telling you, Snoop Dogg right now got the number one gospel album. And that should tell you something. Half of these gospel artists have been singing about the Lord Jesus Christ for quite some time. And they haven't made number one. Okay, they haven't even been on the top 50, not even the top 10. And that should tell you something. Um, because God looks at the heart. He examines the heart. See, you may be able to fool all these people. You may be able to dress up real nice come Easter Sunday, but he know what's behind the shell. He know what's running through your veins. He know what's on your mind. God knows what's in your heart. So while you out here swerving and swagging on everybody else, God is tallying up all that stuff. You feel me? 
And my thing is, I love that Snoop made a gospel album because that lets you know right then and there that God has no respect of men, okay? If he said the rocks will cry out to him, why can't Snoop Dogg make a gospel album? Hell, Uncle Luke can go make a gospel album. Uncle Luke, Uncle Luke, don't stop, rock with it, don't stop, get it, get it. I praise God to Uncle Luke, it's Uncle Luke, okay? But the thing about it is, and the reason why I say that is because I know gospel artists that still smoke, that still get high, that pay for sex, that that uh, go to the bar, that uh, fornicate and sin, cheat on their wives. I know them. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm sure some of y'all know them too, because some of y'all hanging out with them too. I don't mind. Listen, to thine self be true. I ain't a judge or a jury. That's between you and God, okay? So whatever you do, you do it very well. Do it to the gods. I don't really care. You feel me? But my thing is, God examines the heart. And we're talking about relationship versus religion. And some people can be so conformed from church and they think they're going to heaven because they've been going to church for years. You ain't going to heaven just because you go to church. I repeat, you are not going to heaven because you go to church. I know so many people that grew up in the church. I know so many people that don't go to church at all. And I would rather get with people who I know their heart is pure and their intentions are good, whether they go to church or not, opposed to having people pray. Because I've had people pray for me and my back started hurting. That. That right there should tell you something. In comparison to people that don't go to church, and I say, can you pray for me? And I feel I feel the the purity, the pureness, and the and the honesty that they're giving me from their prayers. And it's some people that go to church that go to my church, and I, I will walk right past them and not say nothing. If I see you and I don't speak, that means I don't with you. And I mean it. Okay? It ain't no love lost, baby. I just got to protect my spirit and I got to protect my heart. See, I don't play no games when it comes to my relationship. And I, I was once conformed to religion where Easter Sunday, we had to dress up. I got to get my son in nice suits and all of that. And he's empty. I'm empty. How am I helping him by dressing him up? How am I helping me by dressing me up? God don't want no actors. It's enough actors out here. He want what's real. And that's one of, one of the reasons why Snoop is the number one gospel artist right now. Because he want what's real. Snoop probably be smoking the blunt praising God. Why some of these ninjas sit up in the church and won't even raise their hand. They've been there for years. You know why? Because they're religious. They don't have a relationship. They've become so conformed to religion that they, they're null. They're, they're numb. They know, they know when to clap. They know when to dance. They know they know when to say hallelujah. They know when to say amen. They know when to say praise the Lord. See, my thing is, you got to learn how to praise God when ain't nothing around. There is no music. There is no preacher. There is no pastor. There is no, there is no praise and worship. That's, that's when God honors your prayer and your praise. When you can give him a hallelujah and your tank is on E. When you can praise God and your daddy committed suicide and your and the hospital killed your mama and the prison killed your brother. That that's when you can thank God. When you can still praise God and your house is in foreclosure. That that's when you can thank God. Okay? When you're sitting in a rehab for 33 days and you're trying to figure out how your son gonna get to school. That's when you thank God. When you're sitting up in OCJ because you done violated your probation three times. That's when you can praise God. See, I don't play this game with God because I want him to honor my prayers, not only for me, but for the lineage to come after me. Because I'm working hard, y'all. If I had 10 jobs, I would still work just as hard. And it makes me so mad when people go to church and they think that God is just supposed to bless them because they clapping their hands and they asking God to make it pressed down, shaking and running over and men will give unto my bosom. No, the Bible also says faith without works is dead. Nigga, get up and do some work. He not just going to give it to you. You got to put in some footwork. 
And then you can't play church. You can't act like you got it all together. You know, you got them church people too who are so, I'm so saved and sanctified and I'm filled with the precious Holy Ghost of the Lord and I don't sin, I don't fart, I don't burp. You know, I I wash up at night and I don't never go to sleep. You know, I don't dig in my nose and, you know, I'm, I'm just so grand. No, nigga, no, boo, you're fired. God don't care about that. God don't care about that. He don't. And see, I want you all to understand the difference between a relationship. Just like you are with a woman, a man, or a man, or a woman. Whatever your preference is. <laughs> when you desire to be in a relationship with someone, you get to know them. When you, when you want to be in a relationship with somebody, you call them. You text them. You see what they're doing. What they like. What they don't like. You hit them up. They say, you say, what's up? You give God praise. You know, when you want to be in a relationship with somebody, you, you find out what they like, what they don't like. You don't just read your Bible when you, when you about to go to jail. You don't just call on the Lord when, when you facing five to 10 or, you know, you don't just call on the Lord when you didn't had an abortion and you want him to forgive you. And I'm not judging. I've been here, done that. What I'm saying is God honors a pure heart. He honors a pure heart. And see, because I'm working on my relationship, because I'm working on my relationship, I don't have time for these religious fools going on with all of that. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I don't have time. Like the time that's on my watch that I don't have, I don't have time like that. That's, that's the kind of time I don't have. The time that don't exist. Okay? So, Easter is approaching. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. It's your girl, Zsa Zsa. I didn't make it to the studio today because my pockets didn't let me, okay? I'm on a budget. I'm balling on a budget, okay? So, with that being said, um, I want to let you know, this Easter, don't be trying to spend all that money. Y'all got bills that you got to pay. You got tickets that you need to pay. You got people that you owe that you need to pay. And if you come up in that church with some suits on and you know you owe people money and you know you owe DTE and you know you owe D uh, Detroit water and sewage and you got to pay your metro phone bill and you keep giving, getting extensions and all of that good stuff, you need to just put on some nice clean clothes. And if the Lord touches your heart to go to church on Sunday, then go. But don't go in church with your kids or yourself dressed up because you're going to look like a fool. We call those people EMC members. EMC members are Easter, Mother's Day, and Christmas. EMC. Easter, Mother's Day, and Christmas. Those are the people that only show up on Easter, Mother's Day, and Christmas. Don't be that person. And if you're looking to kind of segue into church, start reading your Bible before you get there. That might even be better and honorable in the sight of the Lord. Because it says, study to show thyself approved. And you want to make sure that at least you know something before you get there. Other than God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. You got to know more than that. It has to be some substance there. And anybody that knows me knows that I love God. And there was a point where I hated God. I hated God for him taking my father. I hated God for him taking my mother. I hated God for him taking my brother. I was mad. I was angry. I was angry with God because I felt like there are so many people that can die that I could give you that you can kill that can be dead right now opposed to the people that I love so much. I hated God. Because I felt like, why would you allow us to hurt like that? And so, I had to get to a point where I had to let God know something. I'm like, nigga, God, dog, bro, nigga, God, dog, my homie, God, dog, you tripping, bro. This your girl, Zsa Zsa. 
Like, what's up, God? Like, you gonna do me like this? You gonna play me like this? God, this what you gonna do? Like, I've been, I've been praying. I've been fasting. Like, I've been going to church. You know, I'm, I'm working with the youth department and I'm working with the women and the kids. And you, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna do me like this? Like, you gonna take my mama? You gonna take my daddy? You gonna take my brother? You, you know, you gonna have me lose? When I talk about losing, this ain't no, this ain't no fair weather stuff. This ain't nothing I'm making up. This ain't not. I, would I rather say I'm winning? Heck yeah. Anybody want to say they winning? But see, I'm not fake like that. And the only thing fake on me is my nails, my hair, and my eyelashes. And that's just it. I'm not going to pretend to be something that I'm not. I'm not going to pretend to do things that I'm not doing. You're going to get the real. I've always been like this. And the more that I've become, my, become myself and okay with myself and a relationship with myself... The more that I can have a relationship with God, the more it's honorable. The more my relationship, the, the realer I am with me, the Bible says to thyself be true. And some of y'all be lying, some of y'all been lying to yourself for so long that you are believing your lies. Like I remember dating this guy and he just thought that he was just like so bossy. Now, don't get me wrong. His swag was out of this world. But nigga, you living out your trunk. You're not that swaggy. Like, you're driving a Benz, but it's in my name. Uh, hmm, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, y'all know somebody like that. Y'all know people like that, that that think that they doing something and they ain't doing nothing. Or, or they're making it seem like they're living this life and they're not living. Like, they, they're, they're living paycheck to paycheck they just make struggling look good my underarms are sweating i'm hot but yeah we're talking about relationships versus religion and it's your girl jaja and you're listening to yeah i said it and i'm at an off-site location and you can turn it down um what we're talking about is easter sunday is approaching and before you go try to dress your kids up and get all dressed up find what you got at home Find what you got at home. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it smells good. Take a shower. Put on clean underwear. Make sure you look clean and give God some praise. And start giving him praise when you wake up before you get there so that you ain't got to be hyped up when you get there. Church is not a show. And unfortunately, we've become so conformed that everybody's looking for performance. Everybody's looking for the when God only wants a hallelujah, a thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so mighty. Thank you. But he also wants you to get off your butt and work. I'm, I'm over people at church just waiting for things to happen. And they're not going to happen if you don't move. You know, people ask me all the time, well, how did you get this? And how did you get that? Or how are you moving like this when you only got this? Because I got the favor of the Lord on, on my life. And Easter Sunday is coming. And, you know, I want to give a shout out to my old church, Greater New Jerusalem. And I want to give a shout out to them because I tell my son all the time that Greater New Jerusalem was um was was base camp. It was boot camp. It was boot camp. That's where you learn to be out to be attitudes, you know. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's where you learn the Lord's Prayer at Greater New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. That was boot camp for me. I started going there, but then some other stuff went down and I had to dip. I can't be there. I just, God had to show me it's time for you to go and it's time for you to grow. And sometimes we like to sit and stay at churches because of um, family heritage or family lineage when you know it's been time for you to go. You ain't growing there. You know auntie, uncles, you know who's sleeping with who. You know after service who's smoking a cigarette, who going to get drunk, who going to eat after who house. You can't grow like that. Can't grow like that when you're able to stay the same way. God wants for you, he wants you to grow. He don't want you to be the same way. And unfortunately, there I couldn't grow. And it wasn't that um, they didn't want me to grow. It's just that sometimes you outgrow people, places, things, and seasons. Sometimes 
You keep trying to fit your size 9 in a 7 and it don't work. You need a new shoe. And so when I started going to Greater Emmanuel, I didn't want to go there. I'm like, these niggas is clapping and shouting and running all around and they're doing the most. What is this? This is some fugazi. They are some frauds. They are fraudulent and some Decepticons and I don't trust it. But I was so focused on religion. And see, when you focus on religion, you're looking at the church. You're looking at who clapping. You're looking at who hitting the tambourine. You're looking at who doing this and who doing that. And y'all are listening to Yeah, I Said It With Your Girl, Jaja. I got a new location just for today. My pockets, I wasn't balling today. I'm on a budget. I ain't lose my money in Vegas because I ain't do a lot of gambling. I did a little bit. Put a couple, uh, played the penny machine. Penny machine is off the chain, y'all. I just want to let y'all know. Y'all might want to get hip. Anyway, um... I'm talking about religion versus relationship, and I was letting people know, hey, don't do not do it this Easter Sunday. Don't embarrass yourself, and if you feel led to go to church, then go. If you don't feel led, then God ain't mad. He know your heart anyway. Um, and if you're going to go and dress your kids up, don't tell them that Easter is about the Easter bunny, because it's not. Don't have them so focused on getting an Easter basket that they hey nephew hey braylon i love my nephew i love my nephew braylon and my nephew dj don't have them what's up anointed 60 i see you coop deville sitting on 24s listen don't have them kids thinking easter is about the easter bunny and if you don't go to church and you don't believe in god you don't believe in whatever believe in yourself and and give out positive energy give out positive vibes that's why I asked today on Facebook, like, y'all pray for me and send me some positive vibes. Because these niggas was just so, I mean, you know, everywhere I went, I was getting hit with a brick wall. And I know that there have been times in all of our lives where you're like, God, what's up? Why is this happening right now? What did I do? Why is this happening? What's up, Lee Collins, Elder Collins? And my thing is, it was so frustrating because I want my delivery to be right. I want my delivery to be pure. I want when y'all, when I talk to y'all, that y'all getting positive vibes from me. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. I want my light to shine. I don't want to come to y'all as a nightlight because I'm not a nightlight. I'm a spotlight. So get your watch up. You heard it first from Jaja. So make sure you give me my credit. Okay. With your relationship with Christ, with your relationship with God, it takes a whole lot. It takes a whole lot. And any diamond any gold anything of value has pressure it has pressure it has people stepping on your neck and it make you hungry and it make you strong and it make you oh i ain't come from joy road and seven mile for nothing god had a plan for me he got a plan for me i ain't just around here screaming out joy road exit now come up off the freeway I ain't just screaming I'm from Joy Road, but my money long is six miles. I live that life. I walk them streets. And I'm not saying it trying to get accolades or street credit or nothing like that. Because I don't need accolades or street credit from none of y'all. Because ain't none of y'all got a heaven or a hell to put me in. And that is what's real. In real life. And at the end of the day, I'm going to do me and I'm going to be me. Whether you, 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 you or you or any of you. Like it or not. And I and I feel so much better, y'all, because the enemy has a way of making you feel small when you're trying to grow. You know, I'm working on my radio show, working on a few other projects that I'm working on. And I know that I'm going to be great, just like I know you all are going to be great. And when you have opposition, you got to be honest with God. Snoop Dogg has a number one gospel album. Not because he's Snoop Dogg. It's because his relationship with God is pure. I'm sure Snoop smokes a blunt and praises God at the same time. It may not be the right thing in the eyes of the religious. But in the eyes of the relationship, he probably know more about God than half of the niggas that go to church. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. So many people don't want to come to church because you religious people make them feel bad for being who they are. If where they are is smoking Newport 100s in the box 
or going to buy them some 50, 50 cent Lucy's. Let them get their Lucy's and let them come to church. Who are you? If she got on the dress from the club from the night before, she may not know no better. Or maybe she does. But at least she is coming. Let them come. Don't turn them away. Don't turn them people away. Because those are the very people that God will use. If you really read and study that Bible. And you learn some of those characters in that Bible. You'll know that God used the least. I mean, look at Jesus' mama, Mary. She was some little chick from the hood. Joseph was a carpenter. He just, he put stuff together. He wasn't like a prince or a god or, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of land. I mean, come on. We talking about, uh... Who else? Who else? Can? Ruth. Ruth and Naomi. He used Ruth to marry Boaz. By the way, I'm reading when my Boaz comes. So if my Boaz is out there, y'all, and if you don't know what a Boaz is, get in the buck. It's in the buck of Ruth. Okay? And y'all know what, the, what it is. Okay? It's when my Boaz comes. So for all you ladies out here trying to get married and trying to get chose by something and somebody, I would suggest you read this book. It is by... Tiffany Lewis, you can order it or find her on Facebook. It's T-I-F-F-A-N-I-E Lewis, okay? Or she's on Instagram, booked underscore T-Y-L. But I'm reading When My Boaz Comes, which is helping prepare me the next time that I get married. Because, honestly, I got married because I didn't think I was really going to get married. You know y'all niggas be lying, telling these girls you're going to marry her and you love her and you, and you give her a little rock, a little pebble, and she gone and she think that this is what's happening. You know good and well you ain't marrying this girl. You save yourself a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of heartbreak, ladies. When you get things squared away, and young men, when you get things squared away and stop playing games. Because if you really want a family, and if you really want marriage, then that's what you're going to pursue. And God will, bless his, God will bless that. He who finds a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. Okay? So if you're going to get you a wife, it's going to be a blessing. Not only do you get to smash that ah, on a regular basis, because God makes sex, and sex is great. Um, but it's honorable in the sight of the Lord. I know last week I talked about, you know, it's getting ready to be hot. Y'all getting ready to get out here and, and pop that thing and get the clapping and getting that clap back. But y'all better make sure that you're getting tested because these girls is nasty because they out here, uh, sucking and loving and loving on everything. And these guys is nasty. They out here eating booty like groceries. Mm-hmm. I said it. I know y'all out here eating booty like groceries. If that's your thing, then eat away. Okay. However, in the midst of all of that, those are germs. That is DNA that you're exchanging. So just make sure that you're gargling with Listerine and scrubbing your tongue and getting your shots and making sure you're getting tested because STDs are real and they could kill you. Even though they have a cure for AIDS and HIV, they're not giving it to the poor people. And unfortunately, even if you think you got money, you're still considered poor in the eyes of the government. So just make sure that you're wrapping it up. And we're talking religion versus relationship. If y'all want to call in, you can call in. Call in to this number, 313-575-3116. Oh, no, don't call that number. That's my bad. Don't call that number. <laughs> don't call that number. Uh... You want to comment? I check your comments. You want to call in? We're talking religion versus relationship. I'm telling y'all, don't get dressed up for Easter and slap God in the face if you ain't been there all year. God know your heart. He know your mind. And he know what you're thinking and what you're not thinking. So look, since we're going from religion to relationship, I don't want those people who are going to church to be, um, what what's the word I'm looking for? To be worried about church people looking at you because you haven't been don't let anybody deter you from going to church if that's something that's in your heart to do 
And if you're at a church where you feel like you're not growing, don't waste no more time there. We only get one one shot at this life. We don't get a part two. We're not cats. We don't get nine lives. All we have is this one life. And you got to make this one life work. I'm telling you. I, I'm going to live my life to the fullest because I only get one. And some of us don't get a chance to live our life the way that we can and the way that God wants us to because we're fearful of what other people think. When I posted my bald headed picture, do y'all know I was in the movie theater crying? I was in the movie theater crying, y'all. I was at the movie theater for over an hour after Black Panther was over trying to debate whether I should post this picture or not. Now all of a sudden, Tate Martin cut all her hair off. Sanaa Lathan then cut all her hair off. Everybody want to be bald now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. I give God all the glory and praise. Because he's good. And he's worthy to be praised. And so, I'm telling you, if you plan on going to church, if you want to go to church, if you're not going to church, Easter is not about the Easter bunny. It is not about no chocolate bunny. It is not about no Easter egg hunt. It is not about no baskets. But shout out to Kristen Morris. If you do want an Easter basket, she's on Facebook. I think it's K-R-Y-S-T. A-I-N, last name Morris. She makes Easter baskets. I think they run about $20, $25. And she put some really good things in it. She's my homegirl. Tell her Jaja sent you. She's another McKenzie Stag. I'm telling you, our McKenzie Stags are out here doing their thing. They're starting businesses. If you need help, I help people start their businesses and their nonprofit. I'll help you. I'll go over with you. But it does cost. We ain't got time to play no games. And I ain't doing no freebies, okay? Unless you want me to own part of your company. Amen. So, with that being said... We're talking relationship versus religion. I didn't get a chance to make it to the studio earlier because my spirit was off and I wasn't right. I wasn't feeling right. My money was low and my change was strange. Okay, so I am doing it now and I hope y'all gonna rock with me until the wheels fall off. Okay, so we're talking relationship. We're talking religion. And I just want to let you all know I am happy that Snoop Dogg has the number one gospel album. Okay. And to all my gospel artists out there, that should teach you something. It should teach you that it's not about ticket sales and sales of a CD. It's about the relationship that you're trying to exude, the partnership, the relationship. Just like you're seeking after a man or seeking after a woman or seeking after whatever you're seeking. When you form a relationship with something, you learn it. You value it. You cherish it. You get to know it day by day. God wants to know more about you. And not just because you sing in God's plan. We'll start there. We're going to start at God's plan. But we're going to work our way to hallelujah God. Thank you Jesus. Okay. Or whatever you want to thank. Thank the trees. Thank the stones. Whatever. However. But you got to thank somebody. Because it's somebody that's over all of this. And to let you know that. Not only is there a big God, but there are many gods. Like, in the Bible, it talks about other gods. Get my charger for me, son. This phone just died. My other phone. If they, if you're on uh, Instagram Live, I'm sorry, my phone just died. But my son about to go get my charger. We're talking about relationship versus religion. And you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Um... We're talking about the EMC members. We're talking about this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? And if you're going to church, don't be trying to go there, trying to get all dressed up, spending all this money to go and to do the same thing you've been doing. Find you something clean to wear. Go take a shower. Get your kids cleaned up. Make sure they look nice. And come on and go to church. It is not about dressing up. It is not about looking the flyest. It is not about lime green gators, my Detroit players. It's not about that. It's about your relationship with God and God's relationship with you. And it's about Jesus Christ dying on the cross on the third day and rising again for our sins. If that is what you choose to believe, then believe that wholeheartedly. If that's not what you believe, then believe what you believe. In all of your believing, get understanding. Because I know at a point in my life, I did not want a relationship with God. I was upset with God. I was mad at God for a lot of different things that he, he did, um, that he allowed. And not only that, but because I value my relationship with God, 
I brought a lot of that hurt on to myself. See, a lot of us want to blame God for a lot of the things that we get ourselves into. God didn't put no blunt up to your mouth. God didn't make you sleep with that girl. God didn't make you uh, rob nobody. God didn't make you steal nobody's identity. God didn't make you do those things. You did those things. And because God gives us free will to do what we want to do, at the end of the day, it's our choice. Now, does he forgive you? Yes. Does he want the best for you? Absolutely. Why would he not? But the thing about it is, some of us bring on our own hurt. We bring on our own pain when we're disobedient. When we're disobedient, God can't use us. He can't bless your disobedience. He can't, you can't, you can't go steal from the mall and then ask God to bless your pockets. Like, nigga, you just stole. Like, thou shalt not steal. Maybe. Huh. Yeah. So he allows you to have humbling experience. The Bible talks about, um, I think it's the scripture in second Chronicles where he says, um, humble. He said, um, turn from your wicked ways, humble thyself, pray, and then you'll hear from me and I'll heal the land. There are things that we have to do in order for God to do things on our behalf. And if you're just now um, kind of getting there or you saying, job, you know, church ain't for me. Church ain't my thing. That's cool. Church doesn't have to be your thing. God can be your thing, though. You still have to reference something. And and I know for those of you who aren't uh, church people or, you know, religious. Good. Don't get religious. You don't want to be there. You, you don't want to be in a place where you are. Uh, you think you're the scripture captain, you know, all the scriptures, but you don't use them. Uh, you think you're so super anointed. You want to lay hands on everything but yourself. Uh, you think that you know everything and that everybody should bow down to you because you've been going to church the longest. Nigga, no, because you're probably going to be the one going to hell. Yeah, I said it and I ain't taking it back. And before I do, I'll add more to it. Because you are the people that God is disgusted with. You go to church and you've been going there for years and you ain't did nothing. You ain't did nothing for the body of Christ. And you think because you go there and you've been going there for 20 years. I hate people to say, oh, I've been going to church and I've been going to this church for 20 years. But what have you done? Do you talk? Do you go to the homeless and feed them? Do you, do you go to the highways and byways and compel men to Christ? Or do you just invite people to church and think that's enough? Because it's not. It's not. He's called us to do greater things. He said that we'll do greater things. So if he already did great things, and, and you're telling me that we're capable of doing greater things, I want to be a part of the greater thing that God has in store for me. Not just um, sitting and being a pew member. We got enough pew posse members. Shout out to all the Pew Posse members. You know, the Pew Posse members is the ones that don't never want to give up their seat because they think that their butt is attached to the Pew and they are the only ones that can sit there. You know the Pew Posse, the ones that tell you, excuse me, that's my seat. Nigga, that ain't your seat! You're going to have a seat in hell. You keep on playing. Yeah, I said it and before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it because I ain't scared of none of y'all. Stop it! You don't own the pew. I'm coming to everybody church and I'm going to just move everybody out the way. Move! <laughs> I just want to let you know, God will put so many, so many things in perspective when you have a relationship with him versus having religion with the church. Because religion is about the church. Relationship is about God. And You'll know if you're dealing with a religious person based on the conversation that you have with them. See, religious people always want to argue. They always want to be combative. They always want to go um, scripture for scripture and word for word. And, you know, they, they are very, you know, downright church. You know, they, they honor the pastor more than God. You got to be careful of those people, too. You know, I love, I love my bishop, but I think, I think my bishop saw a side of me uh, last year that he didn't intend to see and neither did I neither did I and I'm not a respective of any person anybody can get it and I'm not bragging but at that point in my life I needed God more than I needed my pastor 
I needed God more than I needed anything because what I was going through, my pastor couldn't fix. He could pray, but he couldn't fix it. And just like when you're dealing with healing, when you're dealing with uh, church hurt and physical healing, the doctors don't heal. They treat. God heals. You got to change your diet. You got to change your habits. You got to change your ways. You got to do something. You can't expect God to do something and you not doing nothing. You can't say, oh, I got heart problems, but you smoking a cigarette. How that's going to help you? You better go find you a, uh, what's them things? The, uh, what's them things called? That's just the smoke and not the stuff. Not a vape. You better go get a vape pen and go sit down for you lose your heart. Cause you only got one. Then you're going to be on a heart transplant list. You're listening to Yeah, I Said It, and before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. It's your girl, Jaja. We're talking religion versus relationship, and I want to be on the relationship side. I don't know about you. So, look, we're going to segue into relationships because I went to Las Vegas, and Las Vegas is known as the city of sin. What goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. And let me tell you something. Vegas is overrated. I just went. Um, I thoroughly had a great time. Don't get me wrong. Um, but what I did see is I had almost like an outer body experience because I didn't get drunk. Um, I had drinks. I had, um, a few like fruity cocktails and then I had a couple of Coronas. Um, but I wasn't drunk and I, I made it a point not to get drunk because I wanted to remember my experience. And sometimes... We drink to forget. We drink um, to harbor our feelings. We want to feel a certain kind of way. And we want to drink or get high to subside the feeling that we're feeling. Because we don't want to feel that way. And drinking and getting high makes us feel another kind of way. And so you have to be careful when you're out in public and you're drinking because you never know what you'll encounter or who you'll encounter and your blessing may be tied to that person that may be in a room but if you sloppy uh drunk and and, and high and blew out god can't use you he can't he ain't gonna send a, a billionaire a millionaire up to you to bless you and you blew out you can't even talk. You slurring and it was so crazy because I could have recorded so many people that were drunk and just they went there to have a release, like just to have their alter ego um, become something else. And, you know, I was I saw this guy. He was so drunk, y'all. He was so drunk. And he was just talking about how he was going to have sex and F anything. I'm going to F a rock and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to F a, a basket and I'm going to F a black girl tonight. And I'm going to F a Chinese girl. And I'm going to he was just he was wilding, bro. I don't know. He might have been on that, you know. He might have been. He might have had him a few scoops of the white girl. And I don't know. But he was on that ziggity boom. But the thing about it is, had I recorded him, all his friends was drunk. Nobody was in their right mind. And then you got other people that started recording. And we're in a time frame where technology is booming. Like, you don't want to get caught slipping out here being drunk. You just don't. The Bible says be sober, diligent. Because... The adversary is Roman seeking who he may devour. And if you get caught slipping, you're going to get messed up. Especially if you're drinking. And you got to be careful who you go with. I thank God that I went with my homegirl, Jessica. Shout out to Jessica, Jim, my girl. Uh, Jim with Jess. Dream girl underscore Jess. I went with her. And I remember being with a relative and almost getting slipped a Mickey. Do y'all hear me? They put something in my drink and I literally was crawling because I couldn't feel my tongue. I couldn't feel my limbs. And, and had I not been coherent enough to know that something happened to my drink, I could have been a victim of rape. And literally, I mean, literally, the guy wanted to was going to try to have sex with me. While I was unable to literally move. And it was so crazy. Because a lady saw me. And I was saying help me. And I, 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 in my mind. I was screaming help me. But my voice 
was very small saying, help me, help me. And she could see in my eyes, help me. And I'm saying all of this to say, in our efforts to have a relationship with God, you got to be true to yourself. And if you like to drink and know that you like to get toe up, get drunk and toe up at home. Get turned up at home. Don't go out to these clubs trying to get drunk. You want to get high, smoke a blunt, roll your own blunt. Don't let none of these Negroes or women or men roll your blunt, roll your weed. Because my brother's weed was laced by his own people, his own friends, his quote unquote homeboys. And they ain't nowhere to be found. Half of them didn't even come to his funeral. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. What you gonna do? Nothing. So you gotta be mindful who you share those experiences with. Young ladies, young men, women and men. Don't be so desperate to be in a relationship with a man or a woman that you don't have a relationship with God. Because if you have a relationship with God, he'll send you the man or the woman that'll rock your world. Okay? He'll send you somebody that'll rock your world. And I mean that for real, for real. We're talking relationship versus religion. I'm trying to put this charger in my phone so it don't go off on y'all. I hope y'all are enjoying it. I'm not at the studio today because it wasn't in my budget today. But I'm still going to record my show because it's still my show. And yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Because I'm not going to let nothing or nobody stop me from being great. And you shouldn't either. If you got a business or an idea that you want to start and you need some help, then do it. Do it one step at a time. Snowball effect. Do one thing at a time. And if your relationship with God is true and honorable, he'll bless, he'll bless your two fish and your loaf of bread. Okay? He'll make sure you straight. He'll make sure you tight. He'll bless you. So while I was in Las Vegas, I had a good time. I turned up. But I could understand why it's the city of sin. Because everybody and their mama go there to get buck wild and get loose. And my thing is, don't wait to go to Vegas to get buck wild and get loose. Like, I feel like you should kind of already do that and get that out your system and enjoy Vegas. Don't go to Vegas to get out of character and then come back as if nothing happened. Like, nobody saw it. Nobody was there. Like, it was sad because I saw so many people just zombied out. And I'm sober looking at these people like is this what i used to look like coming out the club is 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 this what i look like leaving this that and the third i'm telling you it, it was almost sad at, at, at some point but god is good i had a great time i suggest anybody want to go to vegas go make sure you wear your walking shoes child because your feet gonna be hurting I thank God for my feet. You understand? My feet. My big toe. My pinky toe. Jesus, my pinky toe. I said, my God. My feet. My neck and my back. My feet. Oh, my God. Why is this happening? We're talking religion versus relationship. You are tuned in to Yeah, I Said It. It's your girl, Jaja. Before I take it back, I'll add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. We're talking about relationship with God versus religion. And so on this weekend, it's Easter Sunday. Don't forget, Jesus is the reason for the season. It ain't about no Easter suit. It ain't about no Easter bunny. It ain't about no Easter eggs. It's about who died and rose for you. It's about who wants a relationship with you. It's about who wants to see you win, not nobody else. Your relationship with God is a solo thing. Like Beyonce, when she left Destiny's Child, she ain't need all that. She just wanted a relationship with God. And if you really, truly are humble and humbling with yourself, God don't need nothing from you. You need something from God. He created everything. What you going to create for him? Nothing. What can you do for God? Nothing. Other than give him praise. Because you didn't wake yourself up and you dang showed him putting no oxygen in your lungs. Because if you did, I would really like to know. We need to put you on Ripley's Believe It or Not. We need to put you on Fox 2, CNN, CBS, PBS, and all of the other S's where you need to go because if you put an oxygen in yourself and you breathe life in yourself then i would love to meet you i would love to meet you 
And for those of you who don't believe and you saying, well, I'm my own God. Well, guess what? Your own God. Be on your deathbed and see how that works for you. Go in the courtroom and face life and see how that works for you. Call yourself. Call on your name and see what that does for you. Because I know I tried to call on Jaja and she ended up in OCJ with a burgundy uniform on. And they was trying to take, making me take my lashes off. And I had to tell them, don't take my wig off because I ain't had nothing under there. I'm negotiating with the sheriffs. Because I want to call on my own name. So you might want to be careful um, for those people who decide to be non-believers. And yes, I know that um, Christianity was a white man's religion and it came over and we were slaves and we were brought over here from another country and we were kings and we were gods over in Africa fight for your rights I believe in all of that but I also believe in the blood of Jesus and I also believe that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus I also know that I don't have any history or any land over in Africa I'm in America okay and until somebody go over there and bring me something back I'm gonna keep believing in what I'm believing and if you rock with me and I rock with you, you believe in what you want to believe in because I'm going to believe in what I'm going to believe in. And I'm still love you. I know a lot of people that don't believe in God and don't believe in Jesus. But what I will say is believe in the power of positivity. Believe in the power of spreading goodness and not evil. It's enough evil people in the world. It's enough. I mean, come on, y'all. I mean, we are getting killed. I mean, Stephen Clark just got killed in his backyard. And, and they said he had a crowbar. Then they turned around and said he had a gun. Then, then found out that it was a, a phone. Y'all, yeah, it's enough evil out in the world. I don't know what you believe in. But I, I believe that Jesus died for me and I believe in God. I don't believe in church. I don't. I go to church. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I've had church hurt. I've had niggas in the church that that I used to be down with. That I that I was Ace Boom Coon. All of that, my ninjas, and turned out to be the fakest thing since since lashes. <laughs> you know, I mean, my my people in the street was more real than the people in the church, but I didn't I didn't let that stop me from coming and going to church. Did I take a break from church? Yes, I took a break, a very long break, because I was tired of watching the fakes and the phonies thinking that this is honorable before God. And sometimes you get to a point when you have a real relationship with God, you see the fake and the phonies for what they are. And like I say all the time, only thing fake on me is my lashes, my, eye, my, my, lashes, my hair, and my nails. And that's it. My relationship with God is real. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to record re record my show earlier because I want you to have the best that I that I can offer you. And if my spirit's not right, it will transform. Spirits are real. So if you're out there popping, locking, and dropping it and having unprotected sex with whoever you choose to have sex with, those spirits do transfer and they get in your system and then you want to figure out why you're itching because you didn't have sex with somebody that's itchy. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Where my phone at, son? Did you turn it back on? I know, but I need you to turn it on for me. You know, got my little assistant with me, my son. You know, the kids is on break. Make sure that while you got them dressing up for Easter, that you got them something to do for the week. Take them down to the DIA, Charles Wright Museum. Go walk down the street to the park or something. You want to get these kids all dressed up and they don't even know a scripture. You don't even know a scripture. And you want to sit up here and go to church and be all dressed up and body and go and get your hair done, and your finger waves and your eyelashes and your nails done. For what? For what? And then don't come back until Mother's Day. And then don't come back to Christmas. And I'm not judging. I'm just making an observation. Don't play God like that. If you're going to go, go. Don't have step. He don't like lukewarm people. He, he don't. And, and, I, and, and let me say this too. Since we talk in relationship versus religion. 
for all of those uh, people out there to say, I don't want to go because the preacher getting all this money. He taking the church's money and the people, they he driving in a Range Rover and I got a hoopty and this, that, and the third. If you're going to a church where you feel like the pastor is stealing, then you need to go somewhere else. If you don't feel like you want to pay whatever the offering is, then don't pay it. You don't, you don't have to pay it. There have been plenty of times where my bishop has asked for something and I ain't have it. Did I want to give it? Yeah, sometimes. But then sometimes I'm like, this nigga crazy. I ain't paying him that. I'm straight. I got bills. I need to take care of my home first before I give you anything. Now, here go my tithes because that's what I'm supposed to give. Anything else, anything else is an offering. It's a sacrifice. It's not obligated. You're not obligated to pay on an offering. You are, however, obligated to pay your tithes. And give your time. It says one-tenth and one-seventh of your time. So you're going to get 10 cent off every dollar you make. That's your tithe. One day out the week, you give toward the people. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing to go knock on your neighbor's door, a shovel, help her out, pull out a trash can. God honors that. But if you one of them type of people, yeah, I gave a box of clothes to Sister Cynthia, cause you know her, her kids ain't got no, <laughs> you know her, her kids ain't got no clothes. God ain't honoring that. He ain't honoring that. He not honoring you cause you showing off, cause you giving somebody something. He don't care about that, cause it didn't come from the heart. Because if you gotta tell somebody what you're doing, then that ain't that's not that's not of God. That's of man. That's of religion. Because that's saying, hey, look at me, look what I did. Look what I did. I did a good deed. You don't have to you don't have to boast or brag about a good deed. You know how much I've given? You know how many people I've helped who've turned their back on me? I didn't watch people's kids, gave gas money, took kids home, spoke on on parents behalf at the church. At the church. Okay? And I ain't scared of none of y'all. Yeah, I said it and before I take it back, I'll add more to it. At the church. I've had evangelists and elders and church members dog me out because I was having a breakdown, but I needed to have a breakdown in order to have a breakthrough. And instead of praying for me, they started talking about me. I had one girl, she came by my house and started recording with her phone, but you supposed to be a Christian. We talking about relationship versus religion, y'all. And the thing about it is I can honor so many people that are close to me in my heart because they stayed down with me when I was down. And I'm telling you, by the, I'm telling you, as Lord is my witness on my mama, on my daddy, and on my brother's grave, I'm telling you, I will make sure that those people who stayed down with me go up with me. Believe that. But anybody else, I'm going to be like, what up, though? And I'm and I'ma still speak and I'ma still be like power to the people. I'ma still pray for you. You know what I'm saying? If I got a little extra some, some, something to help you out with, I may or I may not, depending on how I feel. Y'all know I'm real. I ain't got time to fake the funk for nobody. Because that hurt me. It hurt me to know that the people that I go to church with, even at my old church, it was a situation where I had a friend who now has children with my son's father. And the people at the church did like this. Some went with her. Some went with me. You honor what's right. Period. Even now. The situations that have happened at my church right now. Some went with them. Some went with me. Some stayed neutral. My pastor talked about it yesterday. The people that he helped rise up. And then when he fell, wasn't nobody around. And then when he got built back up, everybody came out the woodwork. What up, though? It's all good. We talking about relationship versus religion. You're listening to Yeah, I Said It. It's your girl, Jaja. Before I take it back, I'll add more to it. I ain't going to be before you long. I'm getting ready to close. That's my first close. So I got two more closes. <laughs> I'm talking about I had a good time in Vegas. Uh, the city of sin, and believe you me, um, the people was getting their sin on, y'all, which is a little scary, um, that you have a designated place and you're okay with being called the city of sin. I went to the Stellar Awards while I was there too, y'all, which was whack. Um, no shade to the Stellar Awards and the producers of it, but it was whack. 
Um, and I'm gonna tell you why. It was whack because at an award show like the Stellar Awards, we're talking about uh, gospel music. God can't come in and have His way if you're saying, "Okay, guys, cut." Okay, we're gonna we're gonna pick back up where we left off. We're gonna have Tasha uh, Paige Lockhart come back out, and we want you guys to start clapping like you did and praising the Lord. And so now it's scripted. Now, now it doesn't even feel the impact of what she just sang about is is not reflective of what I'm doing. Cause now you didn't you didn't chop me out of my my worship, and now I gotta revert back to starting all over again. So they were whack. I think they need to do them live. Let it run all the way through and then go back and chop and edit. Do it that way. I think that's more sufficient. So I don't know if anybody knows the uh, producer or directors of the Stellar Awards. Tell them to call Jaja so I can help them out and they can get more viewers as well as more young people. Because um, it's almost like a little church click, the Stellar Awards. You know, um, a lot of people, I heard a lot of people saying things about Snoop Dogg. Because he's the number one gospel artist. I'm going to tell you something. I love Snoop Dogg. I love Snoop Dogg when he was smoking a blunt and rolling down the street smoking Indo. Sipping on gin and juice. I love him now that he's saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. He got the Clark sisters featured on his album, which is my first lady. And Auntie Dorinda and Twinkie and, and um, who else? Who am I? Jackie. Uh, and even Denise. Even though she wasn't on the album, she's still a Clark sister too. Shout out to Denise, girl. You still a Clark sister too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. I'm not scared of none of y'all. Um, he's featured. He has them featured. And I and I think that that was great that J. Drew even partnered up with Snoop because they over religion. They over church folks. Y'all got to stop putting people in boxes because y'all are the ones that's going to go to hell. You pew posse people. Who think that you own your seat at the church. Don't be tripping on people come Sunday because they want to come to church. If she come in there with a mini skirt, pray for her. If you come in there smelling like Hennessy from the night before, pray for him. Don't talk about him because you don't know what he going through. There was many a days I got up in that choir smelling like wine and the club. I was singing in the choir with, uh, <laughs> with my tether on. Hi, how about that for those apples? Since you think you know so much, I pushed that, pushed that tether all the way up to my calf. It was up there. <laughs> what you going to do about it? And God honored that a whole lot more. That's why I'm able to drive what I drive. And he going to bless me with a bigger house. And it's going to be mine and I'm going to own it. And I'm going to drive in my driveway and park my car in my garage. It's going to be a multiple garage for my multiple cars. Okay. So, I had a great time in Las Vegas. I would suggest you go just to have the experience. I would suggest you do the touristy stuff. Um, each, ho each hotel has its different array of different things to do. Um, you don't have to drink. You know, I had a few little um, cocktails and I had a few Coronas here and there. But I wanted to enjoy my experience. I wanted to remember what I did. I didn't want to lose focus that I still have to live. I still need my liver and my kidneys and my lungs. And I still needed my mind. Because when you start overdoing it, you, you lose nerves in your brain that you can't get back. So if you smoking your weed, are you eating berries and drinking water? If you like to drink every day, it's water and tea in your diet. What about nutrients? I mean, balance. I mean, you can't overindulge in one thing and not get the proper things that your body needs in order for it to fulfill what it needs to fulfill. You only get one body. God only gives you one body. He didn't. He's not raising you up from uh, the dead and you full of <laughs> you full of uh, toxins. He can't. He can't can't use that so um i had a great time um i definitely would encourage you if you go to vegas to go to this place called pampas p-a-m-p-a-s um it is a it's a dinner buffet and it you get your main entree and then you get all you could eat sides so they had like asparagus and zucchini and squash and it was all you can eat just like the sides and biscuits and stuff like that so it was really good very affordable because you know i'll be balling on a budget i'm always looking for a deal and a discount okay all right you hear me even when i become a multi-billionaire i will still be frugal 
and I will still be on a budget. That's how Oprah has been a billionaire for the last 15 years. Okay? So, Las Vegas was straight. I would suggest you go. It was a good time. The Stellar Awards were whack. They need to just do them live and then go back and edit them. Um, I stayed in uh, Bally's. Bally's was a nice hotel. But one of the things that I did notice, they were a little racist in um, in Vegas. And um, their customer service was not very well. I'm very big on customer service. And, you know, rest, rest up to my mom. I thank God for um, her many experiences of employment because she worked for the Marriott and she also worked for the Westin. And um, we learned customer service. I learned about customer service when I was 11 because I was working for her as a freelance model for Calvin Klein. Yeah, your girl worked for Calvin Klein, baby. Okay. Um... And so I learned what to expect and what not to expect when it comes to being a customer and when it comes to being an employee or employer. So let's be very clear. Few things when it comes to religion and relationship, because we still talk, everything ties in to religion and relationship. When you're religious, you feel entitled. When you have a relationship, you have more of a heart of compassion. So you look at things differently. That don't mean that you can't be stern, okay, and add exclamation points to your points, okay? It doesn't mean that you get trampled over. It just means that you look at things differently. I can look at a lot of people a certain kind of way if I chose to look at them in my religious eyes, just like somebody else looking at me. But I don't. I choose to look at them in a different way because I have a relationship with God and I don't know what they're going through. So I have to take a step back and say, okay, Jaja, they may not be going through or they may be going through something that's causing them to act the way that they're acting. But that doesn't negate the fact that everybody is due quality customer service. A customer is supposed to treat an employee with respect. And an employer, an employee is supposed to treat a customer with respect. Period. Bottom line. I don't care what field you're in. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Goes a very long way. I know if you ever saw me on uh, the show Parking Wars, I said in the Detroit episode, you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And some of y'all got the most nastiest attitudes. I don't even understand. Like on both spectrums. Like as a customer, you nasty as an employee, you nasty. Like, how does that work? Nasty plus nasty equals nasty to the second power. Like, that's just it. There's no, there's no in between. So, um, the next time that you have an encounter where your experience is not so pleasant and you can't get the results that you're looking for, seek a manager. And if you can't seek a manager and you don't get results from that, we have the internet. Blast them. Blast them. Tell everybody, don't go there. They nasty. They mean. They rude. Oh, people don't want to have uh, bad reviews. That's why everybody wants you to do a survey. Everybody wants you to fill something out to make their company a top brand or a top company. If you're not getting the quality service that you deserve and you're supposed to get that you're paying for, then you complain about it. Don't just humble yourself and walk away. And if you're being disrespected by a customer, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable because everybody on every spectrum deserves to be respected. You respect people because you want to be respected. Now, some people do get out of pocket and you got to put a nigga in check real quick and let them know. I ain't for no games. You understand? Okay. So, um, oh, my friend, uh, Jessica, she went to go see JLo. Not a big fan of J-Lo like that. I'm more like an actress fan of J-Lo. Not a music fan of J-Lo. But I do love my girl from the 6. If you had my love and I gave you all my trust, would you lie to me? So I do like her a little bit, but not enough to go see her. Because her tickets was $200 and your girl ain't balling like that. However, if it was somebody else and I had $200 that I liked, I would go see them. But it wasn't J-Lo. But shout out to J-Lo. You still my girl. Still my compadre. You still my bonita. Okay. Love you, girl. Um, shout out to the Lyft and Uber drivers. Um, all around the world. Because being an Uber and Lyft driver has become more dangerous. Um, it has definitely replaced the taxi. Uh, shout out to 
Lorraine cab. I remember taking a Lorraine cab when I ain't had no car. Checker cab, yellow cab, green cab. Thank God for Jesus. Man, when you got a relationship with God, he'll bless you. But if you one of them religious folks that think that you're going to get to heaven because you've been going to church for 20-some years, you're wrong. You're probably going to hell. Yeah, you are. And the homeless person on the corner that's the alcoholic will probably be in heaven before you. And I said it, and before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Because you have to be careful how you treat people. I was, um, when I was in Vegas, I, um... While, while Jessica was going to go see J-Lo, I just kind of, you know, perused and walked around. And I ended up coming across this homeless man. And uh, me and the homeless man, we was kicking it. You know, he, he was trying to see my vibes. And, you know, I was trying to see his vibes. Because cause God also tells us to watch as well as pray. Just in case you got to bust a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Or bust an individual. It's just in case, you know. Because you can't be a fool out here in these streets. You got to be mindful. People is still crazy. But the Holy Spirit... The spirit, your intuition, whatever you got, whatever you want to call it, it'll tell you danger. It'll tell you walk away. It'll tell you, no, I'm not them. So, and it also tells you be careful how you treat strangers because you never know you could be entertaining angels. And that night, I believe I was entertaining an angel because this is what he said to me. Um, I walked up to him, you know, and uh, my thing is sometimes I act a little crazy just to see the temperament of the homeless person or the stranger. Because if they crazy, like mentally, you know, my brother, after he got his weed lace, he, he wasn't the same. And uh, out of all my family members, he never messed with me. Like, he threw oatmeal on my mama's head and, you know, he ran from the police. He hid in trees and, you know, he robbed and stole because he was messed up in the head because they, they laced his weed. His friends, his friends laced his weed. Yeah, I know. And yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. What you gonna do? Nothing. They laced his weed. His mind went crazy. We had to take him to the receiving hospital every other week. He getting a shot. Then when the shot wore off, he's even worse than what he was. And so with that being said, you know, I'm, I have to check the temperament to see, you know, is they, is they crazy? You know, because you got to act crazy a little. Sometimes you got to get crazy with these fools to let them know you ain't you about that life. I am the one. So I'm, you know, I'm standing there. I'm looking buck eyed with my eyes out. And I'm looking. He looking at me. I said, what up? He said, where you from? I said, I ain't from here. Where you from? <laughs> he said, I, I, I can tell. I said, good. I'm glad you noticed. What's up? How you doing? He said, I'm good. Just sitting out here trying to make it. Woo, 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 blah, 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 blah. I said, God is good. You going to make it. He said, yeah. He said, man, I don't know who you are, but um, God is going to have you making some power moves. He ain't know me, y'all. I ain't know this man. He don't know what I got going on. He don't know what I'm doing. You know, he said, he said, what do you do? I said, man, I'm just trying to live, trying to stay above water, do my due diligence and be the best that I can be like the army. He started laughing. I said, what you doing out here? Cause I know you ain't from here. He said, no, I'm not from here. I moved here and, um, just been trying to get on back and forth on my feet. I said, God ain't going to let you fall. Even though it may feel like you've been forgotten and you've been forsaken, God will never leave you nor forsake you. He got your back. And even, even you being out here, he'll have your back when you don't even know that your back has been got. Okay? Uh, let me say that. God's got your back even when you don't know that your back's been got. Okay? And we laughed and... um. You know, I gave him some encouraging words, and he encouraged me. He, you know, he spoke into my life. This man don't know me. He a stranger. But my thing is, had I snobbed him, had I looked at him like, ugh, you dirty, ugh, what's this, ugh, you a bum, ugh. Now, half of y'all is one check away from being a bum. But I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to go there. You, you stunting in front for people that don't like you, no way. You trying to keep up with the Joneses, and the Joneses can't even keep up with themselves. Live for you. Have a relationship with God that God can honor. Love God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your crooked ways, he will make them straight. Snoop Dogg is the number one gospel artist for a reason. Because his heart is pure. His relationship with God is pure. He smokes his blunt and he praises God. I have 
witnessed it for myself. There have been times where I had to thank God because I was drunk over the drinking limit and I made it home. Car crooked, phone in the car, wallet in the back seat, ID, looking for my phone and my credit card. Some of y'all know, some of y'all been there. Some of y'all trying to figure out how you made it home, made it in your bed. How you didn't get robbed, didn't lock the door, car wasn't locked up, keys left in the car. Some of y'all know how God has brought you, how far he's brought you. You've been in the war, you've been in the army, the navy, and the marines, and God has protected you. You didn't protect yourself. You think your helmet protected you? You think your shield, your little uniform protected you? It didn't. Because God has a plan for your life. And if playing God's plan by Drake is what will get you closer to God, by all means, I thank God for using Drake, for using Snoop. Because he said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And if he got to use Snoop Doggy Dog, Snoop D-O-double-G from Long Beach, California to get you to have a relationship then that's what he got to do. If he got to use Drake from the six to get you to reverence God, then guess what? He going to do it. He said the rocks cry out to him. He got talking bushes. You think he ain't going to use what he want to get the glory? You crazy. God will get the glory. And you religious folks, you going to go to hell if you don't get your relationship right. Because a relationship with God does not equate you being in church for umpteen years. That just means that you're a professional churchgoer. And you got to be careful. Because if you don't honor what's right, you'll be right in hell. So you take all your little years of singing in the choir. And all your little years of ushering on the usher board. And all your little years sitting in the front row on the pew being a missionary evangelist, whatever, whatever. All of that means nothing to God. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, he honors little kids more than he honors adults. He said he honors babies and fools. Babies and fools. That should tell you something right there. So if he got to use Snoop Doggy Dog to get you to understand your relationship with God, then that's what he got to do. So I'm getting ready to go to bed. No, I'm not. I'm lying. I'm getting ready to go do something else. <laughs> um, but what I will say before I close, that's my second close, so I got one more. One of the things that I did notice in Las Vegas is that um, there were so many families, like mama, daddy, kids, um, traveling. Um, if you have the opportunity to take your family on a trip this year, even if it's just to Belle Isle this summer and have a picnic, um, even if it's to River Rouge, not not by the strip where everybody be hanging at, but it's a lot of parts on River Rouge that a lot of people don't utilize. Um, there are a lot of parks um, in Michigan. If you got a car, you want to drive, you know, somewhere, Ypsilanti, Belleville, wherever, uh, downtown, just walk it. I don't know. Our families got to be together, guys. You got daddies over here with these kids and you got mamas over here not taking care of these kids. And you got these kids living with grandma and them. We got to get our families back in order. And it's not enough for you to come to church and pretend to be families and then y'all not y'all not whole. It's, it's not enough for you to be uh, somebody's boyfriend or girlfriend and treat their kids better than you treat your own kids. That's a problem. Yeah, I said it. And before I take you back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. You have no right treating somebody else's kids better than your own kids. You should be ashamed of yourself. And if Easter is the only time that you are referencing your kids, that's a problem too. If Easter is the only time you want to look fly with your kids, you're crazy. You're ludicrous. You're an idiot. You're downright dumb. You're stupid. You are a fool. If you are only going to church on Easter, Mother's Day, and Christmas, stop it. Get out of here with that. You might as well not even come. Just stay wherever you're at. But if you do decide that you want to build a relationship with God, don't play him. He's the ultimate player. 
Okay? He know all your moves before you move. If you saying it's chess and not checkers, then you better move like it. Because he already know what you're going to do, what you're going to say, and how you're going to move. He know your uprising and your downfalls. He know what you're going to say before you say it. He know what you're thinking before you think it. Now that's creepy. That's why I'm very mindful. That's why I didn't do my show. Because one, my money wasn't right and my attitude wasn't right. And I want to give y'all my best on yeah, I said it. Because before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. So, make sure that fathers and mothers work together to build your families. If you're treating other people's kids better than your own, you're going to hell. And I said it. Jaja said it. You're treating other people's kids better than your own, you're wrong. And if you under a woman or under a man and you neglecting your kids to be with in a relationship, you're going to hell. You're going to hell, and I hope you get herpes and AIDS for the rest of your life. Because there is no way that you should be neglecting your kids to be under some man or some woman. Period. Now, I'm not saying don't get your groove on and don't go dating, and, and mama need a man too, and daddy need some loving. What I'm saying is, don't negate or not do your due diligence as a parent because you want to be up under somebody. Some of y'all are so desperate to be with a man and be with a woman and be taken care of that you ain't taking care of your own responsibilities. And it's sad because you need to cut it out. Yeah, I said it. And you're watching Zsa on Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time because we talking religion versus relationships. And if you really want a relationship with God, start tonight. Start right now. Repeat after me. God, I am sorry for not acknowledging you as much as I should. I know that you know me better than I know myself. I'm going to try and do better. Starting today. I'm going to get on my knees if I can and pray. Or lay in the bed and pray. Go get in your car. Go in the bathroom and shut the door. Pray in your mind if you got to. But whatever you got to do, it got to be pure and it got to come from the heart. Because God ain't honoring no fake stuff. And ain't nothing fake on me but my eyelashes, hair, and nails. And I'm your girl, Zsa Yeah, I said it. Before I take it back, I'll add more to it. I love y'all. I'll see y'all next week on Thursday. Y'all, next Thursday is going to be good. Because next Thursday is going to be Teens Talk. Okay, I got my son, his friends, my sister. They going to be in there. And y'all know, my little sister Nunu, y'all think I'm bad. Nunu off the chain. <laughs> she a whole nother species. And my son, he's a little different too. He's coming into his own little shell. He was going to be my special guest tonight, but he's asleep. And he needs his rest. You know, our young men need their rest. Let's pray for our young men, y'all. They don't want our young black men to succeed. And um, I'm not going to be fearful for my son because I know that my son is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I wish I would because they're going to have to deal with the mama bear. And I don't play about my baby bear. Okay? I love y'all. Before I take it back, I'll add more to it. You are watching Yeah, I Said It. It's your girl, Jaja. I'm going to upload this video on YouTube. Listen, I need y'all to subscribe to my YouTube channel and stop trying to play me. Because when I make it, then y'all going to be like, oh, girl, I was with you the whole time. And I'm going to be like, no, let me look at my subscribers and see if you're one of them. Oh, nope, you're not. No, you weren't with me. Mm -mm. No, I don't believe it. So, I have 4,000 people that are friends with me on Facebook. Some of you I correspond with on a regular basis. Some of you are lurkers. Some of you just watch what I do. Some of you are hating from afar. And that's okay. I'd rather be a helper than a hater. You'll get to it. You'll, you'll grow out of hate. It's okay. If not, stay where you're at. I ain't worried about it. Um, but I will know. So I hope you subscribe. My YouTube channel is Jaja's World. Yeah, I said it. Jaja is my real name. It is not a fake name, nor is it a nickname. It is my government, okay? It's a lot of people using my name, okay, for their little entertainment name purposes. But this one was born with it, okay? Maybe it's Maybelline. I love y'all. Peace out. Follow me. Listen, it's your girl Jaja. Yeah, I said it. Before I take it back, I'll add more to it. I love y'all.